hey there this is atul from team k tunnel academy and this is a day two of a 12 days video series on aws from complete beginner to making sure on day two and uh, day 11 we'll be preparing for certification and day 12 we are preparing for resume interview questions as well so before we talk today we are going to talk everything about identity and access management and security in aws but before that let me remind you the task that we did yesterday so yesterday i gave you a task of creating a free account on aws so i hope you have created an account so if not go back and create account on AWS, which the steps which I've given here on creating a free account, um, which probably are also here. Just quick, quickly can Google on kdonacademy.com or sorry, Google on how to create a free tier account or towards and I'm going to talk about how you can get hold of this uh, entire series and an email step-by-step -step instruction. So today we are going to talk about day two. So sorry, one more thing which I uh, talk, uh, mentioned about was the account. So this is the account which you have created and yesterday I talked about the regions and availability zones. So this is what's talking about this reason when you log in and when you create some services, you'll be creating them uh, inside the specific region that you are selecting here. So if, um, if I select this and create some service, it will go and create in that particular region, in this case, not US East uh, one, which is not for Genie and so on. Just a pro tip here. Uh, now objective is to create these videos under the 15 minute and that's my objective is. So let's begin with that. Uh, this is identity and access management, which is users, group securities, etc. So the first thing is about identity and access management. Uh, basically, this consists of your users, groups, policies, and roles. And what this identity and access management prov provide you is the security, uh, uh, making sure that you securely information, share the information, uh, privileged, um, and then you want to do some activity, you can see who's the right person to do those particular tasks as well. Um, so in the context of identity access management, there are four things, four main categories, users, or we call service account as well. Uh, so user is an end user like you and me who are accessing a AWS. Um, and then for these users, we put them into a group so that we can apply the policies through something called as a uh, roles. Well, that's how we're going to discuss. So users will be logging on to either AWS or for command line or through services, etc. And then they will be accessing the resources like um, that we're going to see from day three onwards, like storage, compute, networking, database, and so on. Now, these users will be placing them into a group. And the reason for placing them in a group is that associated group of users, for example, developers or a tester or a DBAs or network engineer, or maybe application user, we can grant them a specific permissions, which we define using policies. So policies is, are nothing but a set of rules that dictates what a, whosoever has that policy, what that you, that particular uh, either identity or user can, can do or can't do. And those policies are being assigned through roles and roles are attached to a particular uh, service. So for example, it could be storage, it could be networking, those roles which will have a set of permissions. So that's how they assign. So put it to wrap it up together. Uh, you create policies to a, do a particular activity on a service that you attach to a role. And these roles can be attached to a, a group or a user to grant someone access what they can or can't do. Uh, now, in order for us, before we go and look at other services on security, let's look at on these users, how you go and create these users or access these users. So you're on AWS console and you search for IAM, which is Identity and Access Management. If you click on this Identity and Access Management, this is where you will see these users, groups, roles as well. So let me move. This is where on the screen right hand side here, you see these users groups. Let me see if I can move this a little bit here and I can still work on these uh, points here. So this is where I'm going and creating my, I can go and create users. This is where you see left hand side, all the users, roles, policies. Um, and if you notice here, the minute I change it to users, roles, policies, the region has changed from a specific region to a global, which means the identity and access management services global. They are not specific to a particular region. These are global service now. And that's why uh, these are all, these things are grayed out here. Now, identity provider, which we've not covered, is nothing but ensuring that you can you can integrate this whole access through a identity provider like Azure Active Directory, or you can have a Microsoft on-premise Active Directory, 
or maybe third party uh, identity provider uh, uh, services as well we are not covered or we are not covering here and the account set settings will be dictating um, like for example a password policy uh, secure token service and a lot of other services that you basically enable disable with respect to this account so for users you simply go and click on create a user here and you can go and create a username type username and create now one optional thing is provide user access to the aws management console the if you select this then user will be able to log into the aws console otherwise then if you don't enable this then they can still do the work but using command line interface or using apis or using um in terraform or some other places as well that you want to use uh, so that's number one make sure that today we are going to give you a task which will which you're going to will will cover that in a bit later so that's users groups and roles next is uh, a security service is WAF, which is a web application firewall. So what this WAF is, WAF is a layer seven service or um, a networking layer seven, which basically works with applications to protect that application uh, so that they protect you with the service like distributed denial of uh, attack, or maybe making sure that you protect uh, uh, um, any unwanted users or any protect any IPs which are blocked or marked as spammy uh, IPs as well. So uh, that WAF can be configured with other services like CloudFront. What that CloudFront is will cover in subsequent days. You can also configure it with application load balancer, which we'll cover in networking section. APIs gateway will cover that later when we look at API for developers and app sync as well. So you can configure this. So what it's going to do is it's going to sit in front of that service and anyone who, if a request is coming from a bad IP that WAF already has that service. So it will protect or if it sees that distributed denial of service attack coming, it will protect around that as well. Now, if you want to know more in that email, you'll click on this email uh, on and, and click on more to read more about AWS WAF, which is a blog given by written by my team. And we'll be writing more about this WAF, how it works and the, what are the features, uh, everything. And then including maybe you can try out and create a WAF with a free account that you already have now. That's number one WAF. The second point is second service is Shield. Now, AWS Shield again, uh, click on this link here. And uh, by the way, if you want to go, uh, if you want uh, access of this series, which I'm talking about, you can check out by going to ktonacademy.com forward slash AWS01. And every day you'll be getting all these emails one by one and some additional document. Um, so you can select and click your name, email address and, and enter your phone number with the, uh, with the right country code so that you are added into WhatsApp group as well. So coming back, the shield, the role of shield is basically, again, it's specific to distributed denial of service attack. It's protecting against distributed denial of service attack. attack. Now, um, it basically shield you can put in front of a cloud front. We'll talk about cloud front in coming sessions or Amazon Route 53, which is a DNS service, domain name service as well. Now, it's basically uh, for protection against um, layer three and layer four of a OSI networking model. Um, if you're familiar with networking model, if you're not, don't worry. There's a layer three, four, five, six, seven, three and four are networking level and seven is application level. So the WAF is an application uh, layer seven, OSI is layer seven model um, protection and AWS Shield is very specific that um, just specific to distributed denial of service attack with Shield is just for, sorry, um, AWS Shield is for just for distributed DDoS, whereas WAF can do much more than that. So WAF is a little bit more mature more in uh, more met, like covering a lot of other th things as well so that's uh, shield then you have another service security service is called as key management service as name suggests you can go and read more on this kms so the role of key management service is to manage centrally manage the encryption and decryption keys for data protection so what happens is typically um, that you have a data which could be data at rest and data in transit both needs to be protected using it an encryption though those encryption keys can be keys from uh, from uh, aws provided keys or you can use your own keys as well and there's some other keys as well for different purpose all those keys can be managed through a key management service kms um, basically so that's basically kms then you have another one which is guard duty and as name suggests it's basically guard duty is constantly monitoring your account 
um, for different workloads. So if notices anything unusual, it will alert uh, in, in your cloud account as well. Uh, so it's good service to have, but it's it's going to charge a little bit more money. It will be cost. Uh, it will be so it will be continu continuously monitoring your services uh, as well. Now these are some of the services there are more services but these are very common services you'll come across and if we're preparing for interviews if you're going for security services uh, certification which is aws um, security certificate or aws solution architect certificates um, then these uh, you must know these things in detail as well we'll talk about that on day 11 and day 12 about certificate and and jobs as well so now some of the best practices you might ask in interviews as well, and especially you're, you're working on a cyber security, security are um, that what are the things it should be looking. So you have a root account, make sure that you keep that root account very secure, lock it away somewhere very safe, and you use it only when you can't use any other account. Prepare an, a, a, uh, another account with maybe a little bit uh, similar or less privileges than, uh, than your root account as well. Also, always create a separate individual users. Very common sense. Make sure you use groups uh, and add users into groups with uh, related permissions. Very standard um, things as well. There's one more thing which I forgot, which is multi-factor authentication. You can enable for a user, which basically, apart from your username and password, you, that needs to be also having a second factor of authentication, like a SMS on an app, maybe a Google Authenticator or a, a message on your uh, phone and so on always um, implement um, extra policies and also monitor AWS activity on a re regular basis. So that's pretty much uh, from a security key, um, uh, objective is to keep it fift under 15 minutes um, as well. Uh, so a couple of tasks for you now, go and create an account. So I hope you already have an AWS account and if not, go and create an account. And today you're going to create a identity and access management user and then play with that user and see can that user do something? Don't give any permission, just a normal user uh, and and uh, kit and log in through that user uh, as well. Now, when you're logging in through a normal user, it's going to ask you an account number, account ID, and this is, will be the account ID you'll be making note of. It will be different for you. This for our uh, company account ID. So do that and let me know. In the next email, I'm going to talk about storage options. We'll be looking at three types of storage, S3 bucket, which is object storage, block storage, uh, which is EBS and file storage, which is EFS, what these are, how do you attach them as well, uh, and so on. Also, uh, let me know the feedback. Uh, how's the feedback? Are you enjoying? Did you uh, share it with your friends and colleagues um, as we learn in the group? Also, uh, anything that you want me to add extra on these uh, sessions that we are doing, or you want to go a specific deeper topic because I'm constantly uh, every probably couple of months I'll be revising these small these videos and I'll be adding more content around that or maybe in my upcoming session I can add those topics uh, or go back and uh, refine as well so let me know what changes you want me to uh, do and with that I'll on date this is Atul from Team Ketun Academy as I said my objective is to keep them under 15 minutes if you need any help suggestions let me know that's why I'm talking fast uh, but I hope enough because we all are busy and I want to make sure that every minute I use your, of your time, I use, use it wisely. So perform this lab and put it in the comment section and say you've done it. Um, and if you need any questions, you need any help issues, uh, let me know about that as well. With that, I'll see you on day three tomorrow. Thank you.